Now, this next thing we're going to tell you about is brilliant. So during lockdown, you know, you might have been keeping a journal or a diary or some kind of online blog. People have been talking about how to log this experience, maybe with your family or friends. Well, Paul Hand is a photographer. He's an artist as well from Hinkley. And he's been doing these family doorstep portraits. So what would happen is you'd have your family peer out your window or you'd peer out your front door. And from a distance, he'd do these portraits or these photos. And he's now compiled all of them into a book. Morning, Paul. Good morning, Jimmy. This is such a lovely idea. What made you want to start it? It's difficult to remember the exact reasons I wanted to start it. I've been running a project around the Hinkley area for about eight, nine years called Hinkley Photographed, which has now changed to Hinkley and Burbage Photographed. And I've got a large portion of the community that are following the project, just over 5,000 people. And I've been creating like a documentary of the area over this period like of people and place, different stories and how the environment looks and things like that. And when coronavirus came to Great Britain, it was phenomenal. It was just groundbreakingly shocking. And it shocked me to the core. And I dealt with it the only way I knew how, just by reaching out to the community and making photographs about what was going on. They look lovely. I'm just looking at some of the photos on your website now. How did you find people to take part in this? Did you know these families or did they contact you and how did they find out? Because I'm just looking at this lovely one of two little girls, Darcy, Rose and Beatrice. You've got the best rainbow I've seen that a family have managed to put together with a bunny rabbit in the window and they're so happy peering out the window at you. That particular picture has got a very short, and quite funny story to it. And now, just in general, every photograph that I've made, not one of them were through the doors, like you originally mentioned. They were all through windows. And the purpose was, is I was trying to collect the reflection of what was outside of their house. So they were locked in, and we could also see what was on the outside of their house, as well as photographs of them looking out at what they can't access. And I did the same with Darcy Rose, and uh, I can't remember her sister's name. For every portrait, I was Beatrice, cycling around. Beatrice, thank you, that's right. Every time I did a portrait, I cycled around there, and I've got a, a seat that sits on the front of my bike, and I also have a three-year-old daughter. While my wife and do- uh, other daughter, they were both key workers, so they were out all the time. So it was just myself at home and my daughter, so we'd go around with my daughter on this seat, and we would make the photographs of people. We were separated from everybody because I always told everybody to not leave their house because I'd be coming around and I've got my daughter and she doesn't really understand social distancing. These two girls were the first girls that my daughter had seen for a couple of months and it was the same for them as well. So they were kind of making each other laugh, which is why I got such a great picture of them smiling and showing their extreme happiness. It, it shows. It's so nice. And there's so many other lovely photos. I urge people to go and have a little look. If you want a little bit of joy in your life this morning, go to paulhands.co.uk and have a little look at all these families um, peering out their window that Paul's taken photos of. Now, I just want to bring you one of the family who actually took part in this, the Whitaker family from Hinkley. Mum, Brenda, morning to you. Morning. Morning. So how did you get involved with what Paul's done here? I've got Paul as a friend on Facebook and he put a a post out there sort of asking would anybody be willing to take part in this? Originally it wasn't, I don't think the intent was for a book, it was just like photographs because he's been doing this for so long. Would anybody be interested in taking part in some photographs for lockdown, just through your windows, you know, social distancing? And I said yes and also... Paul had become aware of the story about my son. My son was one of the Brits stranded in Peru. Yeah, I was going to say, because it's it's a photo of you in the middle with your husband to your right or left on the photo and your son um, yeah. to to the right of the photo, le- your left. So he nearly didn't make it, did he? No, he, um, he'd gone on holiday with his partner originally to Mexico and then to Peru because his partner had um, some family in Peru, which they wanted to visit. And whilst they were there, um, lockdown was imposed. So then he spent the next couple of weeks um, trying to get home. Um, Because they'd booked flights privately, the airlines, obviously they were all closed. He'd got in touch with um, the Spanish embassy as well as the British embassy. And most of the places were closed. Even the um, Peruvian embassy, I tried myself. And we were just getting no response. I think no one was manning the phones. It was a very, very frightening time for him. And in the end, he was getting no joy. So he said, Mom, can you contact your local MP and see if 
anything can be done. So I contacted our MP, um, and he unfortunately said because Corey wasn't in his constituency, nothing could be done. So I put a post out there about what was going on, good old Facebook, and a friend of mine put me in touch with the Lucy Blackmore Trust. Right. And they helped Rick stranded abroad, and they were paramount in getting home. I mean, it was so scary for him there. I bet. They couldn't, they couldn't leave their rooms. If they did, it, it was one person only. Yeah. Very, it was severe lockdown, wasn't it? I mean, not not like here. It, very drastic measures. I remember talking to other people that were in a very similar position, Brenda. And, you know, just looking at that photo, that must mean so much to you to, to see that because to, to look at it, you would never imagine necessarily the story that you've had to go through so that, that photo could be taken. He was he was running out of money. He was, if he could go to the shop, it was with an armed guard, you know, which were carrying guns. They couldn't be out on the streets. They would have been killed. Um, it was a very, very frightening time. And when, because of the trust, they did manage to get him home. They managed to get him repatriation flights. They got the form for him to fill in. They were monitoring him. And, you know, Corey was actually helping other people. Look, you get in touch with this trust. This trust is the one. Because there was loads of bricks stranded out there. Mm. You know, and then it was just the course of, like, waiting and waiting. Is he going to be on that flight? Isn't he? He was actually on the last flight out of Peru. Wow, what a story. Brenda, I'm so pleased that you managed to get your son in that photo because he very nearly, as you said, didn't make it. And Paul, what great work that you've achieved here. Um, Paul has put this into a little book. So if you want to go and have a little look and find out more, just go onto his website, paulhands.co.uk and have a look. He's put it together. It's called Locked Down. It's for sale. It's 20 quid. And the photos, just go and even have a little look yourself because they are fantastic. (laughs) 